Okay, now the crucial team news. Sheffield United make two changes from the side swept aside at Aston Villa. French under-21 international Christian Nade replaces Colin Kazim Richards in attack and Stephen Quinn comes in on the left of midfield. That means positional changes. Michael Tong moves to the centre of midfield and we understand that Phil Yagelka will play at right back. Nick Montgomery plays despite dislocating his shoulder just a week ago. Yeah, a few decisions for Neil Warnock to make. Interesting that he has gone for Yagielka right back, probably to compete with Lee McCulloch in the air, but there's a chance that McCulloch isn't going to play in that role, so I wonder if Warnock will swap things about when he susses out Wigan's formation. The key for me, though, is how Morgan and Kilgallen cope with Emil Heskey, the two Sheffield United centre-halves. They didn't do too well at Aston Villa last week against John Carew. Heskey on his day is just as capable of giving them a real problem. If they can handle him, they might be halfway there. Well, we're going to also make a couple of changes. It's a day for men of courage, and few stand taller in that respect than skipper Arjen Dezeo, who returns after injury. The Austrian international Paul Scharner moves into midfield, where there's also a starting place for Kevin Kilban, and that means that Lee McCullough plays in a more advanced role off Emil Heskey in preference to the Nigerian international Julius Agahawa. Well, he may have left a couple of strikers on the bench, but that, believe me, is as attacking a team as Paul Jewell would dare to feel today. Both Kilban and Valencia on the flanks will try and get forward, and you can bet Sharnam and Lanza will also push on whenever they can. What he has done, though, Paul, is go for players I think he can rely on, players who know what it's all about in these kind of situations. I'm talking about De Zeo at the back, Sharnam, Kilban, McCulloch, and Heskey up front. The question is, which of these players can be a hero today who if anyone is going to pop up with a vital goal well managing the football club is a hugely well paid job these days but on a day like this it really should carry a government health warning he looks relaxed but who in their right mind would want to swap places with Paul Jewell or indeed Neil Warnock today they'll be kicking every single ball down there on the touchline I can assure you One very famous blade in this capacity crowd of over 32,000 here at Bramall Lane today. But it's a match that could also require a strong official and we've certainly got one today. Mike Dean is the man in charge and no premiership referee has shown more red cards than he has this season. That card explains the feelings of most of these proud Yorkshiremen. The two clubs have met in all four divisions of English football, but never before have the stakes been as high as this. It's a £50 million pound match, if you believe the estimates, for being in the Premiership next season. And today, quite literally, Alan, winner takes all. Well, that's right. I mean, that's the advantage they've got. We're looking at them there. The cop, the Sheffield United cop. Sheffield United will be supported brilliantly today. And Wigan have got to cope with that at times. They've brought their full allocation up the other end. It's a day for character and guts and bottle. Mr. Dean checks the numbers. And I'm sure every fan in the country has been checking the tables. Basically, it boils down to this. Victory for Sheffield United and they're safe. Wigan, in that circumstance, would go down. But if Wigan take all three points today, they'll stay up and Neil Warnock's team would be praying for the right result at Old Trafford. It really does not get much more exciting than this. Handshakes between the two men who, metaphorically, will be at each other's throat over the next 90 minutes. Of course, it's being played out to an intriguing background with a threat of legal action suggesting that whatever happens here in the next 90 minutes this is a drama that could run and run a cool rain-swept day here in Yorkshire Marde just about keeping that one in play Gillespie to his right interesting to see the tactics and the attitude of the two teams today will they go for it Gillespie here certainly is a dangerous cross 
Baines gets it clear. He was a doubt for Wigan with a hip injury. Heskey takes over and feeds it into McCullough. Heskey's gone for the return ball. He was perfectly placed. First corner to Wigan. Well, that first minute has told us all we need to know about the attitude of the two teams. It's going to be fast and furious. No punches held whatsoever. The captain who missed the last game with an ankle injury has come forward to add his height and weight to Wigan's presence here. Heskey trying to get around the back. It looked as though he might have been wrestled away. That's certainly what the Wigan players are claiming. The first big decision for referee Mike Dean in the first 30 or 90 seconds. I'll tell you what, Matthew Kilgallen wasn't actually looking at the ball as it came in. Look, you can see he's just trying to manhandle Heskey. And as a defender, that's always dangerous because you don't know where the ball is and you're running the risk and you've got your arms on the attacker like that. You can see in the penalty and he's lucky. Well, I have to say, looking at it again, and I'm sure he would agree, that was a very strong penalty claim. He just got turned, Kilgallen. You just got to make sure you stay side on. One on the ball, the other on the man. Remember, only a win will do for Wigan. Otherwise, they'll be relegated after two seasons in the Premiership. And it took them 27 years to reach this level. Baines looking for McCulloch, who did get a push in the back again. Not been given. There's Nade for Sheffield United. Gillespie attacking down the right again and men over on the far post, but the cross disappointing. That's yeah, a shame it has been right in up to kick off. It's a slippy, lush service surface. They've been very positive though, United in these opening spells. You'd fancy Gillespie in this position just to pick out his man at the far stick. It was in a lot of space. United have dragged themselves out of the bottom three in recent weeks thanks to victories against West Ham and Watford and that important draw to Charlton but they're not out of danger not by any means some very nervous players out there I don't see mistakes there's no doubt about that it is a slippy surface and the nerves on top Heskey and McCulloch are going to be a real threat in the air this afternoon Heskey getting up well, McCulloch ahead of him. Well defended by Morgan, the hugely experienced Sheffield United captain. Playing as a team, that pair McCulloch and Heskey feeding off one another. Staying nice and tight. Gonna have to be a lot of communication across that back line. Right back, a fairly unfamiliar position for Jagielka, although his manager feels that he could one day be England's replacement there. Gary Neville, of course, he's just been called for the first time into the England B squad by Steve McLaren. But even his country on the back burner today. Wigan, eight games without a win. Two months now since Paul Jewell's team last uh, enjoyed a victory. That was against Manchester City. We do talk a lot about the momentum, the fact that it's with West Ham and certainly not with Wigan at the moment. Well, I just think come the crunch in these last day shootouts, sometimes that goes out the window the previous four. It's whatever happens during the 90 minutes, anything can happen. We've seen that so many times in previous seasons. Heskey has won his aerial battles against Morgan up to now. The ball wrestled away from McCullough and indeed it's gone in. Sheffield United's favour let's have another look at the big talking point after 90 seconds or so yeah, I just wonder how much of this the ref was looking at or was he looking at the ball as it was coming in but when you aren't facing the play like that as Kilgallen wasn't he's only got eyes for the man really he has a little cursory glance but by then it's too late Miguelka's clearance not the best Baines have certainly made the more confident start here Wigan and they're playing some neat football. And they've got the first chance, perhaps. Heskey slipped at the vital moment. Sheffield United were all over the place. A lovely play by Valencia in the middle of the park. Swapping passes. 
And this is where he does really well, just to nick one back towards his centre forward. Can't get enough on it, Hescu. Valencia's foot dangerously high then, the uh, verdict had gone against Wigan anyway. And he just caught Geary. Zippy surface, he's cursing himself, but he didn't do better with this. It was a good little passage of play. The defender just does enough. Does it kill Gallant to get in front? Heskey, you would fancy him just to dash across his man there. Now they're making himself available and he can stay forward. Another throw for the home side. Christian Nade has been the most used substitute by Neil Warnock this season, but gets the vote for a starting position on this most vital of days. His layoff to Gallon playing it in towards Stead, away by Kevin Kilban. And Morgan didn't really know Heskey was right behind him. Emil Heskey really looks up for this. The player has twice been relegated from the Premiership in his career, Emil Heskey, with Leicester and Birmingham. But when he's in that kind of mood, he's an absolute nightmare to handle for centre-halves and Chris Morgan has found out that already, has has killed Gallon. The kick goes against Wigan again, McCullough to judge to have committed the foul. They'd be pleased with the start, weren't they, Wigan? Those players have got a nice touch on the ball, showing that a little bit of confidence and character early stages. Got into some good positions, can't be displeased. He used a really graphic boxing analogy, Paul Jewell, to describe their plight. We're on the floor, he said, battered and bruised and spitting our teeth out, but we're still breathing. This is clearance. Terrific atmosphere here at Bramall Lane. Kilgallen with a rather nervy first touch. He gets a free kick. McCulloch's foul. Yeah, the decisions have not gone in Wigan's favour. Neil Warnock will want to see this swung into the box and test out Wigan's aerial strength. Very good record here at home, of course. Sheffield United no fewer than seven of their ten Premiership wins. I've come up Bramble Lane. Oh, Renardi's head. Isaiah got it away, but it'll come straight back in again. Montgomery belting it straight into the face of the nearest Wigan player, Sharma. And did he hit him in a little bit lower than that? He felt it, whatever it was. Another poor defensively against Middlesbrough last week without Desire, but with a captain there. His fans seem to hold things together a little bit more. The Gilkers throw, Morgan the target. Now it's Wigan who get the free kick. Hundreds of balloons littering the pitch as well. Sheffield United have done their best to make this uh, a carnival sort of day. But it's still a day that could end in tears. And he's out beaten to it. Valencia helps it on to McCulloch. He's got in behind Geary momentarily. Has to turn back. Quinn with the interception. Just been called into the Republic squad. Derek Geary for the first time for their summer trip to the United States. So there's been international recognition of some of these Sheffield United players. What they all desperately want, of course, is to guarantee their Premiership place for next season. Winning the battles at the moment. Wigan. Wins played up to Stedden. Nardo, two centre-halves, nice and tight. Taylor's throw. Down the line, McCulloch on to Heskey. And 
Neil Warnock perhaps already thinking of making a change here. I wonder if it's that threat in the air I've been talking about. I know it's a bigger man up in the central defence. This time it was the smaller defender, Geary, who beat Haskey to the ball rather surprisingly. McCulloch's effort. That's a difficult one for Sharma to take on. Would have been spectacular, no doubt about that. Never quite gets the power on it though. Well, you never guess that Wigan were in the desperate position they are in because uh, certainly Alan, they have adapted to the conditions and the nervous nature of the game better than their opponents so far. I think a lot of that has had to do with Heskey and McCullough. They're just playing off the pair and going from there at the moment. The pair are looking right up for it as you'd expect. There's Baines. Not trying to close him down. And back to being the number 21 player. He's giving it away this time. Morgan firing it up to Nardi, who took that quite brilliantly and then claimed the handball. And that's how the referee saw it against Denny Lanza. Short to Yugelka. Now they call him for it again. Little Quinn coming in behind him. You wouldn't expect him to win too many headers. I'm sure that's something they would have talked about. Paul Jules Wigan, the way that they were sloppy against Middlesbrough, the way they conceded that goal to Mark Viduka from the free kick, and they just weren't picking up. They seem a lot more resolute in these opening stages. Possible handball there, not given by Mr. Dean. There's Heskey. Still bad. Along the ground this time, and it's a brilliant strike! It's the most important goal that Wigan have ever scored in the Premiership. It's the goal that could keep them alive. Sharma, the scorer. Well, he had a little try, didn't he, a couple of minutes back. But this one was right out of the top drawer. It's skidding across the wet surface to him. It's all about just keeping his body shape, make sure, making sure his timing is right, and it is spot on. That's as crisp as they come. There's a lot of blue shirts in there when the ball eventually comes in, but questions will be asked. Why is Paul Sharna allowed to swing his left peg at that without any kind of a meaningful challenge? It is sloppy defending, but it's beautiful sight for Paul Jewell. But not for Neil Warnock. A thoroughly deserved early lead, though, it has to be said. And as the table stands at this moment, things are looking bad for Sheffield United. I just see that table swap a few times before the afternoon's out, but you're right, they do deserve it in a way. They've looked the more confident, less nerves within the team in a strange old way. You would expect them to be more anxious than Sheffield United, but it's been the home side that haven't been able to get the ball down, get it together. Well, Paul Sharma said this is a game that's like going to war, and we're ready for the front line and he's proved that by firing the first volley in anger Gillespie playing it short Yagelka Nade. Three Wigan men took a swing at the ball. Kilban finally got it clear. I must say, Heskey has been the most outstanding player on the pitch so far. He has got that capability to lead the side, to give them inspiration when he's in this kind of marauding mood. Everyone else looks at that and I think it just gives them a, a real Philip, a real cheer. Instead, getting the ball forward from midfield. Gillespie onto the loose one. And the decibels just rise again here from the home fans. They know their team have got to get a goal. 
Well, I'd expect a reaction from Sheffield United with Neil Warnock on the sidelines. They have been poor opening 15 minutes. They've been second best. We want to see that change pretty quickly. Early days yet, but we should point out that a draw is enough for Sheffield United to survive. And the nail biting has started already. McCullough keeps sneaking in here and they're having difficulties picking him up at the moment. Sheffield United is back four. for players to move forward and Valencia got himself clear of his marker he handled the ball as he fell Stephen Quinn looks a little bit anxious there at the end he just nudged his man to the side but they're winning every header at the moment when the long throw comes in whether it's McCullough or Heskey they're winning that initial header and after that Sheffield United they're just trying to scrap for those second balls. Stead's header on. Baines can allow it through safely to the Wigan goalkeeper Mike Pollard, who's had nothing to do so far. Preferred to John Phelan for the last game against Middlesbrough and keeps his place today. He's been out of the side for the last four months or so. Stead. Free kick for Sheffield United. Isaiah's challenge. Morgan's gone forward. Marked by Heskey, who even wins the defensive header, though the ball didn't drop quite where he wanted it by Emerson Boyce well, he's got an important defensive job as well Emil Heskey in the way that Didier Drogba for Chelsea does so well going back and marking his centre half and I found himself facing his own goal this time and that was a poor challenge and quite rightly a free kick and a yellow card for Geary yeah, he's dived in Geary on a skinny surface I don't think Valencia's too badly hurt it's certainly light. And he's got to go off to uh, continue treatment. The Ecuador international on a season's loan from uh, the Spanish club Villarreal. it up in the air from McCulloch the linesman on that far side spotted an infringement and it's uh, about three or four times now that he has committed a foul already they're just tugging at his shirt the, the assistant to signify a bit of a bit of pulling in that duel in that jostle Stead's header on and now the referee's given the free kick the other way Desire who's coming out on top at the moment against his younger opponent. Those two have had quite a few of these kind of situations. What John Stead does there, I'm not quite sure. Heskey, looking for McCullough, edge of the box. Sharna, the goal scorer, finds Heskey. Valencia. Quinn tracking back. He's beaten him. Good cross. McCullough's header. And another shout for a handball. Another penalty claim by Wigan Athletic. Well, it's thundered into Kilgallen very quickly. How much of a chance he got to react. I don't know. It would have been difficult to get out of the way of this. It certainly come off the upper part of the arm. Morgan 
Boyce up against Nardi and he won his header. Montgomery. Well, the challenges are flying in as you'd expect in a game of this importance and on such a wet pitch. A lot of big decisions for the referee to make out there. Morgan. Now they're beginning his move into the channel, but he's caught offside. When you look at the Wigan lineup, you know it's a big, powerful side that they've got out there today. They're competing very well, and they're coming out on top at the moment in those individual challenges. Well, there was a suggestion of a handball leading up to the goal as the ball skips up off the surface, off his body, lands out onto the arm. Oh, there were too many appeals at the time. Gillespie, the header into space, now occupied by Boyce. Kill down for Wigan. The ball inevitably something like a hot potato at the moment, but that's a good pass. Heskey. McCulloch and the goal scorer Sharma ahead of him in the box. Sharma coming in. Oh, the right linesman's got his flag up. His flag drops. <laughs> what an opportunity this would have been. Heskey's causing all sorts of problems. He's dropping off and he's getting space. But Sharma has got a few inches on. Terry Geary at that far stick and really he doesn't do enough with it Lanza here's Ryan Taylor the ball forward a little too hurried but it still found its way to its target Valencia the Pelican Heskey await the cross Lanza Here's Taylor again. Quinn just got a foot in. But if anything, Sheffield United looked the more nervous of the two sides and they were in the stronger position at kickoff. Well, he hasn't been able to produce a reaction as yet, Neil Warner. Wigan in charge at the moment. Quinn got lucky with the rebound. Cleared by Boyce for a Sheffield United throw. Wigan fans will hate me for pointing this out, but they have dropped more points this season after taking the lead than any other team in the Premiership. So they will know that they're far from safe at 1-0. Far from safe. Gillespie's header on. Step. Nade comes near post. Quinn far post. They're keeping their composure well, Wigan, even when under pressure like that. And Sharma is breaking very dangerously from midfield. He's got McCulloch ahead of him. Couldn't pick him out this time. Oh, he just wanted the ball to settle in front of his feet, Sharma, so he could play that ball into McCulloch, and it wouldn't quite sit. Great challenge by Desire. Would be fantastic, this opening spell. Desire really has him put a foot wrong. Gallon gets it away this time to Montgomery. Rigelka. Well, they're tending to go long, Sheffield United, and at the moment it's not working out for them. Wigan playing the more composed, assured football. It's almost as if they don't quite know what kind of style to play and whether to play the more direct approach up to Nardo instead or whether to feed it into the feet and defenders and attackers. Not quite on the right wavelength at the moment. Just over a couple of months ago, Sheffield United were 10 points clear of the relegation places, but their recent form has dragged them back into trouble. That was a handball. Well, it was, but it's a great example of the Wigan player getting there ahead of the Sheffield United one, just anticipating that flick down, and he got ahead of Tongue. Happened more than once. Twenty minutes to half time. We're going to lead one nil in a game they have to win. Gillespie. 
Gelka's cross, straight against Baines. Sheffield United's throw. Good running by Gillespie to make himself available. Here he is again. Stead the target. Pollock decided to punch and that proved to be the right decision. So Gallon, the former Leeds man, pumps it straight back in and there's an offside against John Stead. Well, they are doing everything right at the moment. William, the game plan is running perfectly, but uh, the hard bit is continuing that right through to the 90th minute. There's one goal separating these two sides and it was struck by that man. But it was a really sweet strike as well by Paul Sharna. He's just held his ground there and nobody sees it. That's the reaction. Colour causing problems. Sharna winning the ball but he's in the book and he's giving it away to Tong. Jagielka, Gillespie. Stead beaten to the header by De Zeo, but now Nade. Kilban. He was dragged back, free kick. Word with the referee about some earlier challenge. Mr. Dean ignores him, tells him to go and sit down again. Taylor. Well, that was ambitious. Well, on this surface, I think maybe he was just hoping to skid one in front of Paddy Kenny and maybe get some knockdowns off it. I think that kind of move, very confident at the moment, Wigan, and why not? Some of the football that they're playing. Started the day on 35 points, and since the Premiership was reduced to 20 clubs, 37 is the average that's been needed to stay up. Stead. Quinn to his left if he spots him, and he has, but couldn't pick him out. He won't brush him aside easily. He came off Baines for a Sheffield United throw. In quickly to Stead. That's been the difference. The two Sheffield United centre forwards haven't been able to do what Heskey and McCulloch have. They haven't been able to dominate the centre halves up to now. Geary misjudging that and it's almost dropped to McCullough. Well, Geary, a very lucky man. He's got fooled by the flight and a little fall back. No way it's skidded off that wet surface. Oh, McCullough, no chance. Valencia doing well. It looks as though the Wigan skipper, Ian Dezeo, has a problem. Remember, he was a doubt for this game. We'll come back to that as. Heskey and McCulloch almost caused another headache to Sheffield United's back four, but I think he's signalled to the bench that he's struggling and will have to be replaced. That'll be a blow for them. Really will because he's their talisman at times at the back. So he's organising skills and just a sheer presence of him. I know he's hardly trained this week because of that ankle problem that made him miss the last game. And it looks as though he's had it. Well, apart from his undoubted talent at the back, it's his character, it's his personality that they're going to miss as much as anything. Yeah, I think so. He's just feeling his calf there, whether he's tweaked it. You know sometimes that it's impossible to carry on. He's been in a lot of difficulty for the last ten minutes or so. He's absolutely gutted. He's not going to be able to see this challenge through. Disappointment for I and Dezeo. And an opportunity now for the Australian international Joseph Skoko, who I imagine Alan will go into midfield uh, with a goal scorer, Paul Sharner, reverting to the back four. 
Yeah, it looks that way. Shana played there last week. He's, he's done his duty going forward. Oh, he's just going to try and be as resilient and as organised as his skipper was. But in a way, that's a double blow, isn't it, to Paul Jewell? Because Shana have been obviously causing real problems breaking from midfield. Well, they couldn't have asked any more from these first 30 minutes. They've got the goal. They've played some good stuff. They just need to consolidate now through to half time. That's what Paul Jewell will be looking for. Over half an hour gone. Remember, if Wigan win this, then Sheffield United have to hope that West Ham lose or they will be down. In fact, even a defeat for West Ham might not save them if uh, Wigan take the points here, although it would take a rather unlikely scoreline. We won't go into that until it's necessary. But as it stands at this moment, Sheffield United will join Charlton and Watford in the Championship next season. Well, it is a tenuous scoreline, isn't it? 1 0. Wigan will be anxious to get that second if they possibly can. And a confirmation that, as you correctly spotted, Alan, it was a calf problem that forced Ian Dezeo out of the game. A little scrap there on the uh, corner. He's had a little kick out there now, that Leighton Baines. The linesman is right on top of it. I think he's lucky there, you know. And look at the reactions. Furious that Baines is holding him off. That's a little kick. The linesman can't complain about the view he gets. Two Sheffield United players caution then. Derek Neary and Christian Nade in this opening half. You've seen people get sent off for that, haven't you, in different matches? Can't tell you what he thought about it. <laughs> Awful lot of free kicks. But I guess we would have expected that. Devastating Rizzo. He can keep himself warm now and dry as the rain continues to batter down here. Instead, run the header, but way off target. He doesn't quite know that role, does he, Paul Sharna, as well as he does the midfield one. He's filled in there plenty of times, but uh, in an ideal world, world, you would want him in the kind of positions that he was here. They just get sung back towards their own goal too much, Sheffield United, and don't keep an eye on Shana holding his ground. Take nothing away from that strike, though. Only the third goal he scored this season, though. He has missed a chunk of the campaign through injury. Playoff action continues on Sky Sports. Sky Sports 1 and high definition from League One, Oldham against Blackpool. Later today, we start at 5.30. Gillespie, Baines very tight to him. Montgomery couldn't keep it on the field. Wigan have only won one of their last ten away games and they've only managed four wins on the road all season but this is the one that matters you look at their goals for column actually they only scored one less away from home than Liverpool it hasn't been a disaster from that point of view but clearly not letting a few too many at the other end and of course this time last season they were comfortably halfway up the table weren't they and they reached their first ever major cup final and they took on Manchester United in the Carling Cup Morgan's clearance. Wigan have had a taste of the big time and they don't want to lose it. But exactly the same applies to Sheffield United. Esky very closely marked by Jagelka. 
Morgan comes to win the header. Sharna in his new role and Skoko miss kicked. Kane taking it forward. Geary. Quinn on the left touch line. And that's the kind of effort and commitment we're going to looking for today. And that's from a player who almost left them. Almost went to Glasgow Rangers earlier in the season. It's been all quiet about Wigan in the frenetic half an hour or so. Settling things down now. After the change in particular with Desire going off and Sharma just feeling his way into that position. And they have managed to do is keep the crowd quiet. Never an easy task here. Well, Mike Pollard in the uh, Wigan goal has not had a single save to make. Or even a moment of uh, minor alarm as yet. Easy head out for Sharna, but it's gone straight to Gillespie. And once again, the Austrian first to react. Too easy, isn't it? Too easy, and you sense that in the crowd. They want a greater physical presence off their strikers when the ball goes up. But it could all change this in just a few seconds. We're going to have to win. A draw is enough for Sheffield United. The step goes for that. I said it could all change. It just has a priceless equaliser for Sheffield United. Well, I'm looking at Mike Pollitt and his decision to come. And when he did, it was just a little bit too slow. It was a beautifully driven ball in from Phil Jagielka that gave the centre forward a chance to just nod it goalwards. And it was a nasty collision in the end. A neat little one-two off the throw. It's driven in with a bit of spin. The keeper just does not do enough. Once he's made the decision to come, he's got to get there. He knows that. And when he doesn't, John's dead. Well, he can't miss. He knows he's going to be hit the centre forward. He must know that. He must see the keeper coming at the, at the corner of his eye. Head to head. That's a nasty one. But his reward, he couldn't ask for greater. He's got a goal back for his team. He's got his team back on a level footing after a period really where they didn't threaten Not nothing like a team and Neil Warnock's side well I said it's a day for men of courage and Jonathan Stead certainly displayed that quality then literally throwing himself in where it hurts he scored the goal at the moment he may not know much about it they do well you just wonder about it. Wigan's captain going off to Zayo, whether it would have been a different story with, their, with him at the heart of that back line. Attacking that ball, getting there in front of his keeper. To concede a goal from that kind of area, from the edge of the six-yard area, he's hard to take as a coach, as a defender as well. It's a nasty collision. Well, he's scored some crucial position. goals recently, Jonathan Stead against West Ham and Charlton, but none more important than that. Holly's back on his feet, so too is Ryan Taylor who was injured, and that's how that goal has changed things at the bottom at the moment. Yeah, it was just slack, wasn't it? Expect to get in the header from that kind of distance. It was slack defending. He looks okay. Remember, a draw is enough for Sheffield United to, to survive. A draw would send Wigan Athletic down. Look at that. <laughs> That's the most delayed celebration of a goal I've ever seen. About three minutes later. Well, he might, might just have uh, avoided his team getting a real rollicking at half-time. I'm, I'm sure Neil Warnock actually will still get stuck in because it hasn't been the kind of display he would have expected in this kind of challenge. But uh, they've got the goal back. 
That's something to build on. Nicole Johnstead's header a priceless goal. Or well, maybe you can put a price on it because if it keeps his team in the Premiership, it's estimated to be worth something like £50 million. Pounds. Now, ironically, of all the three players injured in that collision, the one who initially looked the uh, least affected appears to have the most serious knock. It's not him, because I think he's coming back, and Pollock's ready, but it's Taylor who's struggling and goes onto the stretcher. And he was almost caught by the effects of the initial collision. Yeah, he got caught in, up in that, just behind Ryan Taylor. It's a great goal though as a centre forward, you know, it's not spectacular, but it's being in the right place and being brave as well, when you know you're going to get a whack. Not taking you off the ball, making sure you do your job and get your header on target. So now Paul Jewell has lost two members of his starting back four. But he's got to bring on now a man of huge experience in David Unsworth, who ironically was a Sheffield United player just a few months ago. He moved back in January, having made half a dozen appearances for them. Well, testing to say the least now for Wigan to have to make those two defensive defensive changes. Emerson Boyce goes over, goes over to the right back. And here comes Heskey at the other end. If they'd had anyone following in, it would have been a very acceptable cross. That would have been a tapping, wouldn't it? The tapping, he just got ahead of everyone, latching onto that flick on from McCullough. Well, in a way, nothing has changed for Wigan Athletic. They came here today knowing that they needed to win to survive. And that situation is still the same. Unsworth winning his first header. And a very makeshift centre to the defensive unit now. And Sharma is really a midfield player. And Unsworth, who is really a left back, or at least has played there most of his career. Heskey's got her. Heskey's got a free kick. Well, he has been a threat. Chris Morgan has been staying tight to him. And this is the point where the two centre forwards linking up yet again there's just nobody can catch up with him or else it would have been an open goal he's got to keep going though Heskey because he's been there shining light at the point of that attack Hunsworth will take the free kick Heskey was the target although Kilban's come in behind him terrific ball that was Boyce gets it back in again well, we're not going to lie down, Wigan Athletic. Heskey! And another foul by Emil Heskey, according to Mr. Dean. Well, he's got to go for the ball, got to go for the cross. But yet again, this is an incident of a Wigan player not giving up, not accepting that it's going out, and it's a brilliant effort from Kevin Kilban. Yagi yeah, Elka. Marking him must feel he's never going to get that one back across. Seconds remaining, plus I would think lengthy stoppage time. Well, it's so galling for Paul Jill because his team just did not look like conceding a goal, did they? Didn't look like conceding a chance to Sheffield United. Well, a push there by Nardo. And he hauls Shana back to his feet before the referee decides to uh, take further action. He's on the yellow card, remember? Gillespie. Stead. What a recovery he's made. What a goal he scored. Shoot was the order from the crowd, but uh, Tom had other ideas. Gillespie keeps it in play. There'll be five minutes of stoppage time. And all of a sudden, the force is with Sheffield United. Amazing how a game can turn on its head. Where previously Wigan were winning every second ball and first challenge. Now it's the home side. Sean up close to Stead, the goal scorer. Morgan has come in. Hovering near the far post, Emil Heskey keeping an eye on him. It 
was a chance for Stead. It was a great chance for John Stead when the flag has gone up. He looked across to the linesman to see if he was onside. Know exactly what the linesman has flagged for. Is it a foul? I'll tell you what, it could have been a penalty to the man. It certainly could. He's got the arm round, two arms round Yagielka. Eski with a brilliant flick onto McCullough. Too far for Phil Ben. Similar in many ways to the kill Gallon one, wasn't it, on Heskey early on in this match? forward by Montgomery had to win that shot and he's given it back to the French under 21 player who was rather crudely brought down by Unsworth yellow card for him yeah, he might have caught him but no they did go down ever so late here as he skips over the challenge and there you see it there was a little bit of contact I think that was one of those that looked worse than it really was yeah I think so Only been on the field a few minutes. Now he's got to be very careful. Things worth coming on as a replacement for Ryan Taylor, who we understand has had to go off because of a knee injury. And as Neil Warner paces nervously on the touchline. But the nerves now will belong to Wigan Athletic. This free kick in a potentially dangerous position. How the emotions can change so quickly on a day like this. Quinn to take the free kick as Nade limps off. He looks in a bit of trouble. Stead, Lagelka, Morgan all making runs to try and escape their marker. And that will be kept in by the speedy Valencia. It's got Lanzat up in support and others arriving now, including Skoko. He bypassed a lot of them. There's been a goal at Old Trafford and it hasn't gone the way you might be thinking. It's West Ham United who have taken the lead against Manchester United. Carlos Tevez, the goal scorer. It had to be. Who else? Well, would you believe that? The controversy continues. Carlos Tevez virtually trying to rescue West Ham single-handedly. And remember, West Ham United only need to draw that game to survive. And Wigan are back in a very difficult position as it stands. Seconds remaining here of the first half. Mobile telephones, transistor radios, much in evidence around the ground today as they try to keep in touch with the other game that will help to settle their fate. Eski threw himself at that one. Oh, it came off something. It was a hand. It was a hand. The referee has pointed to the spot. What drama! Seconds of stoppage time remaining at Bramall Lane and Wigan Athletic have been awarded a penalty kick. Well, you can always tell by the reactions and they ferocious appeals from the Wigan players. Wow, well, look at that. He might get the slightest shove in the back, but his arms are up, is it Yagi Alka? And well, there's no excuse for that to put your arms up in that fashion. No excuse at all. And it's an absolute gift for Wigan. An absolute gift. Well, you need experience and a cool head in moments like this. David Unsworth from 12 yards with the most crucial penalty Wigan Athletic have been awarded all season. And he scored! Wigan are back in front! And the drama has only just begun! Well, how is that? 
The composure, the bottle, the experience. I was looking at David Unsworth and with that left peg of his, I thought, he's just going to whack this down the middle. But look at this. Beautifully placed from a highly experienced player. And how important might that be? Just on the stroke of half-time. Unbelievable. Couple with the news from Old Trafford in the space of just 60 seconds here. The situation has changed dramatically for Neil Warnock and Sheffield United. They're in deep trouble again. And there's the half-time whistle. Would you believe it? Sheffield United in big trouble. Wigan have got their noses in front again. And who would be a manager at a moment like this? Their most important 10 minutes of the season is coming up. And particularly for that man, Neil Warnock. He has got to work wonders during the interval to get his team back into this game and keep them in the Premiership. A change, as you can see, for Sheffield United. The former Manchester United man, Danny Webber, coming on for them. He replaces Christian Nade, who had an out of sort first half and was also one of the players' caution. Last time, Mike Dean refereed a Sheffield United game. He gave three penalties, and they were all missed. He gave one penalty in the first half, deep into first half stoppage time, and it was scored by David Unsworth. And that is not just the most vital goal so far today, but Wigan's most vital goal of the season. Well, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall in both of those dressing rooms during that 15 minutes because sometimes what the manager says and the attitude that he portrays can be absolutely vital to how his team goes out and performs and you're right what you said Alan that could have amounted to the most important team talk 15 minutes that either have given in the time as managers Husky starts to make his run McCulloch behind him an easy catch though for Paddy Kenny quick throw aimed at the new man Webber that's a good ball as well to Tong and it goes to Quinn couldn't return it to Webber and that's clearance Valencia helps it forward Stead Montgomery and now Yagelka, the man responsible for conceding that penalty. And now he's conceded possession. As Kilban plays it long for Heskey. Defenders have got to judge every interception, every tackle so carefully on this wet pitch. And every ball forward like that has to be judged. I think he was forced into a change. Christian Nade perhaps just suffering from... He got that knock, didn't he, against David Unsworth. So in Danny Werber, they've got somebody that keeps it a little bit more movement in and around the goal area, up the channels. Won't give you the physical presence, but Nade does. Might just be a useful fall out for Jonathan Stead. Weller. Quinn to his left, but he can't find him. Called by Sharna. Put so the header by Kilgallen, Montgomery helping it on. And Heskey just got too much on that for McCullough. It's not often, you know, you see strikers play as a team these days. Often it's the two individuals, but uh, Heskey and McCullough have done that today. Sure, it's something they may have worked on in the week, feeding off each other. And it's worked a treat for most of this game. And something I'm sure Paul Jewell would have been asking them to continue in the second half because it was a real problem for the United back four Pollitt looking again for Heskey who wins the header McCulloch's ahead of him and McCulloch and Heskey have proved a real handful for Sheffield United well, Chris Morgan is a centre-half that likes to dominate you physically, but he's finding he can't do that today against Heskey. He's given him a torrid time. Kilban's clearance, Sheffield United's throw.
Goal scoring has been the problem for Neil Warnock's team this season. They've only scored 32 in the 37 games now. It is one of the worst records in the Premiership. And it could cost them very dearly today. They've got the support though. They haven't lost faith. And just as in the first half, it can all change in a matter of seconds. But they've got to play better, Sheffield United, Alan. They've certainly got to improve. Yeah, I think that's fair. We've got to match Wigan physically, first of all. I mentioned the size and strength of those Wigan players, and it's shone through so far. Unlike, unlike United to be muscled in matches, but that's happened in large parts of this match. But they just haven't troubled in any uh, sustained way that's uh, Wigan back four up until now. There's McCullough. Has been ever far away from him. McCullough goes for goal this time, a rather optimistic effort, but fortunately for him, it took a deflection off the defender and he's got a corner out of that. So it's a shot to nothing here, he just squirms off the defender. Beyond Heskey. Spoko coming in. Oh! Wow. Scary moment. What's in the paddy was The Manuel Heskey and a flying overhead kick. It's a training ground routine. They all split. Look at that. It's just an instinctive save. Flings out his left arm. Paddy Kenny. It's a brilliant effort and a brilliant stop from the keeper. They were almost celebrating a goal either side of half time. McCulloch off the line. Sheffield United are hanging on here by the skin of their teeth. Stead, their goal scorer. Foul by Lanzat. Quickly taking free kicks, sees Geary coming forward. Quinn ahead of him. Tom. Geary again. Here's Kilgallen. Stead took that brilliantly. Gillespie on the right. Weather starts to run towards the far post, but that's wasteful. Well, they could have scored another two, couldn't they? Open in five or six minutes. Again, they get the initial flick. Just can't get enough on it. He steers it towards goal. Lee McCulloch, he thinks it's going to be enough. I must say, the things that uh, impress me about Wigan so far today is they haven't been scared of the challenge. They've been brave. They've really gone for it. You could say, well, of course, they had to. But having to and actually executing the plan is quite different. Now it's Sheffield United who've got to go for it, because as things stand, they're going down. A reminder that West Ham are leading at Old Trafford. And West Ham just need a draw to stay up. Eski again. Causing problems for Morgan. Khan header back by Yagelka. Flicked on for Stead to pursue. As each minute ticks by, the anxiety will increase here at Bramall Lane. Some of these players may be playing for their future. Montgomery turns it back and Kilgallen leaves it to his goalkeeper and the ball continues to fizz around and that's a bad challenge by Stead well, I thought so but the referee saw nothing wrong with it he went in hard but he won the ball 
getting hold of this ball isn't at all easy in these conditions and the pace, the frenetic pace of the game at the moment. Not a second. Hensworth's header misdirected. There was a claim for the handball there on the edge of the box. Roughly not interested. Heskey. Heskey going to try and win it back, but too late. And offside. No, no offside. Weber's in. Is that the defining moment of the game? Gillespie. Wigan are furious. They felt that Weber was offside. Well, it looked very tight, a little flick on from Quinn. I don't think he is off, you know. And you think Danny Weber's done everything right here. He keeps his call. Cool. He just dinks it over the onrushing keeper. But such are the margins at this level and in these kind of situations. Look at that. On another day, he might have just bounced into the net. Morgan beaten to it by Heskey. Quinn goes for the ball with Lanza. Wigan surrounding the referee again. They feel that they should have a free kick here, I think. Oh, Stephen Quinn's thrown himself. That's his man there. I'm talking about the fact that Sheffield United have got to get better. There's a few times that they've managed to pierce that Wigan rear guard and find a little bit of space. Nerves afraid. And that's not surprising. McCullough called all the way over to be shown the yellow card. There's another change on the way. Stephen Quinn will be replaced by Colin Kazin Richards for Sheffield United. And straight into the action with a useful cross. And a bit of nervousness at the back there for Van saying, well look, what else could I do? I didn't know what was behind me. If in doubt, play the safe route and he had to do it and just didn't know where the player was behind him. A dramatic opening ten minutes to the second half here. Stead waiting to pounce but Unsworth got it away. Back out to Gillespie. Stead onside. And dangerous ball in. Bodies in the way. And the referee. Oh, that's a bad one, I think. The referee has immediately called the uh, physio on. And judging by the reaction of the players, he might have been knocked unconscious here. Oh, did look nasty. I don't know if it was one of his own players called Heskey here as the ball was swung in. But his teammates knew immediately that he was in trouble. And so did Mr. Dean. Full marks to the referee for acting so quickly. You can't take your eye off this game, can you? There's something happening every minute. Well, by the very nature of this fixture, we expected drama, excitement and incident. And we've had that in full measure, but this is one incident that we could have done without. Fortunately, Emil Heskey is uh, recovering quickly, it seems. Well, what a chance, though, Carl and Danny Weber had when this ball was swung in. This is the earlier one, and this is a great angle. He thinks it, and he must think, is it, isn't it? Oh, tortuous for the striker, and, and for him. I can't believe it. They were celebrating. The width of a post has denied Sheffield United a crucial equaliser. And good to see Heskey OK. And the way he's played today, they need him back out there as soon as possible. Just to keep reminding you, that's the bottom of the Barclays Premiership table right now. Who would be a manager, eh? Who would be in his shoes today?
And just over the Pennines in Wigan. Thousands of their fans will be watching. They've uh, sold their full allocation of tickets today, but it, that only amounted to about 3,000. You can just imagine the scene in the pubs and clubs of that Lancashire town that used to be a rugby league stronghold, but is now very much a football outpost as well. So the streets will be deserted down in Wigan today at the World Cup in 66. But here's another anxious moment on the way as Unsworth is beaten to the header and that thrashed dangerously across the six yard box as Morgan got forward again. Well, he wants to make sure that they don't get that initial flick off. Get somebody in front of Chris Morgan here. He gets a good run on it, the centre half. And that was what Wigan were doing in the first half. Once you do get that initial header well, it's potluck who it falls to. The weather is more like uh, the middle of the season than the end of the season here. And there's a strong wind at Sheffield United's backs in this second half. As the rain continues to pour down as well, McCulloch earns a free kick for Wigan. Just Bruce, short of the hour. Losing an old encounter, hasn't it? There's been a few challenges flying in there today. Not for the faint-hearted. McCulloch has had an excellent game. And he tries to shake off Morgan again. As it's played into Heskey. Good clean catch by Kenny. Not the best throw though, it's rather fortunately found its way through the Gillespie. Cleared by Boyce. One back by Geary. Has him Richards and the corner off Boyce. Well, it's got that wonderful, unpredictable quality about it now, this match as the ball goes things about in either goal mouth you're never quite sure what's going to happen as things stand steadfast post Morgan ahead of him Lanza helps it away from danger and Valencia really needed to hold that one up better And it's a day for cool heads, but it's very easy for players to lose their heads in situations like this. And that sliding challenge was a bit late on Geary. And the uh, right, I think, saw that as a foul by Luis Valencia. Taken quickly to Stead. Great tackle. Great challenge by Sharna. He's settling in now, isn't he? Paul Sharner to that centre half role. Determined that his goal is going to play a big part to his team staying up. And well held up by McCulloch at the other end. Valencia again. Stoko. Kilgallen. Here's Heskey, great turn by Emil Heskey, and he's still going strong, no free kick though, that's what he was looking for, and Valencia comes to win it back again for Wigan, looks though he might have been fouled, he thinks he should have had a free kick, but it's a Sheffield United throw, so many challenges, and the referee's just got to give these players a little bit of leeway on this slippery surface, and with what's at stake, there's Weber who's quick. Stead, not enough height on the cross, but it's only stabbed clear to Tong. Now Yagelka. Tong again. Montgomery. Here's Kazim Richard. Stead wants it early. That's the ball he called for. It was another great tackle by Skoko. Well, unlike the first half. They are playing like a little bit more football and getting the ball into the feet of the strikers. Much better. Not the most convincing corner, the drama and the tension now. Almost unbearable here at Bramall Lane and there's still a long time to go. 
They're playing for a place in the Premiership. The £50 million pound won't matter to them. They're more interested in team sheets than balance sheets. But quite clearly, it will significantly affect Sheffield United's future if the scoreline stays as it is here. Emil Heskey up against Kilgallen, who took no risks, and it's not a day to take risks. What a terrific game he's had, Emil Heskey, Wigan's leading scorer this season. No one in a great hurry to uh, make themselves available for the throw-in. Finally, Heskey does, and McCullough behind him. Just two in the box there. If they hadn't have been a goal ahead, I think the story would have been different. Back in by Baines and cleared in the nick of time as Benny Lanzat was coming in. Unsworth's header keeps the pressure on Sheffield United. It's not a day for fine football, this. It's a day for knee bulging commitment. And that's what we've had from both sets of players. Gillespie Baines trying to force him wide and then he forced him to make the mistake Skoko with a very intelligent ball forward to McCullough no foul well that looks a stick on foul to me he just turned his man seemed to clip his ankles Uh, jumped too early there against Kazim Richards but it is a Wigan throw it's a difficult one for Wigan though isn't it they're in the position that they want to be and when they get the ball how many men do they commit forward on the other hand you don't just want to sit back and invite the pressure onto you but I've noticed last five minutes or so they have been that little bit less adventurous in possession letting the front lads get on with it 25 minutes to go. Things are coming to boiling point on and off the field. The second hand on the clock will be turning as slowly as the pages on the calendar for everyone here at Bramall Lane. That's my Paul Jewell saying, in typical Scouse fashion, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Well, I think you've got to give some leeway to these players, given the situation. Oh, they'll be flashing yellow cards around all over the place. Off Boyce's head, and Sharma miscues his clearance. Hemsworth digs him out of trouble. He's aged about ten years. What a victory this would be for him. What a victory. Bubba can find no way through. Boys claiming it came off there, but it didn't. It's Sheffield United's throw. No pause for breath here. You need to keep an eye on Chris Morgan. He won that header before. Well, up again. As in Richards just helps it back into the middle. Dead. thought it was going to fall to him so did Webber it's a corner and there's the captain again Chris Morgan stayed up there and using his muscle to just get there and knock one down and cause problems anything will do for Sheffield United any kind of scrambled effort now Morgan sailed up higher than anyone else but the decision is goal kick and he got up well enough Maybe just on the way down, but he's disappointed with that effort. It's a clear header. Just stretching. Well, I'm sure he'd rather be at home in the West Country, sitting on that famous tractor of his. He hasn't signed uh, a new deal yet, by the way, at Sheffield United. His team come forward again. Weber for them turns into trouble. Hemsworth standing strong when he needed to. We're three quarters of the way through 
this most dramatic of final days in the Barclays Premiership. And we still don't know who will be going down with Watford and Charlton. At the moment, it's Sheffield United. out of it and then wins it back Kazim Richards every throw in contested as though it's their very last they won't have worked harder these players than they are this afternoon particularly the Wigan lads on the back foot now and the skipper Chris Morgan forward again he climbs high once more and it comes back out to him and then Stead took a wild swing at it oh how important was that Emil Heskey interception there he's on the floor he sticks his foot out gets a block in oh, it's like the Alamo at the moment in that Wigan penalty area last five minutes of Patrick Phil at the moment we've got a good 20 left Morgan has stayed forward and it almost reached Stead did he have his shirt pull there the referee's given a goal kick was it a bit of both as the ball skips through not enough Twenty minutes and counting. There's McCulloch. Lanza has given it away. Weber, Gillespie. Here's Tom for Sheffield United, who have to get a goal and have now lost possession. Valencia. Really trying to show him inside where he doesn't want to go but he's made the cross and it's a telling one and once again they had players coming forward McCulloch on this occasion from deep positions yeah Skoko has made a burst as well he's done well Valencia you know this afternoon a difficult header for Skoko and just look at that Kazim Richards along the ground for Weber whose control was poor he was lucky to get it back Geary Kazim Richards to take on Boyce Stan did well to uh, win it but then couldn't provide the cross uh, at the moment giving up any semblance of uh, attacking Wigan oh, just, hands sat there, just sat on the edge of their own 18 yard area saying come on beat us if you can how dangerous is that a bit of Yorkshire grit needed now by Sheffield United better corner than that needed Valencia went in hard on Geary and has conceded a free kick they don't need that Stead well defended but uh, Stead in his efforts to win it back has given the throw in to Wigan Athletic to their delight just a chance to get a breather and we're at the socks off and saw the action areas there. Paul Jewell is kicking every ball down in that technical area. He feels that uh, a few decisions have gone against him the last five minutes. And I can tell you that uh, West Ham United are still leading at Old Trafford against Manchester United by that Carlos Tevez goal. And that's how it looks at the moment. West Ham well clear of trouble. Who would have believed anyone would say that? Here's McCullough. 
He's tiring inevitably. And uh, the referee has pulled him back for a free kick there. And McCulloch's in trouble. He's in big trouble. He's off. How crucial could that moment be? Lee McCulloch sent off for the fifth time in his Wigan Athletic career. Well, I was talking about yellow cards being flashed about, and the annoying thing is, from Wigan's point of view, that the first yellow card was actually for dissent, I think, complaining about a Stephen Quinn challenge. This one, well, Mike Dean clearly feels a little bit late with that challenge. As it comes in, he goes to ground, and I don't think you can complain about a yellow card. Back into the heart of their defence. Now we're going to have to survive this onslaught with ten men. We've got an injury. Or is it a diplomatic one on Sharma's part? Well, they've had to put up with so much, haven't they, Wigan? They're sending off now, but the injuries in defence. The captain going off early on. This is yet another challenge for them. How many more of these kind of challenges are we only see the last 15 minutes or so? He's reckless really on the halfway line. No need to make that kind of challenge. It's the adrenaline got the better of him, diving in. He's done so well as well, Lee McCulloch. And during this rare pause for breath, let me remind you that if we're going to win here, Sheffield United hope, have to hope that West Ham lose or they're down and at the moment West Ham are winning into the final quarter of an hour Sean are off but he won't want to stay off for long that's for sure they're already down to 10 they're going to bring on Caleb Folan in a minute the uh, former Chesterfield frontman Wigan as the referee restarts with a drop ball and got out of the way sensibly very quickly Kilgallen Gillespie back to Yagelka there's there to be a golden goal here for Sheffield United as in Richards threw himself at the ball Boyce gets it away from danger and the clock, Sheffield United's enemy, ticks on. It'll be swung straight back into the mixer again. Boy's got something on it once more. They've got to get a hold of the ball and keep hold of it, Wigan. And that's not the way to do it. Cutting Richards getting the better of Valencia. Well, there's going to be some tired legs out there. It's a sapping surface this afternoon. And bet against a few mistakes in either penalty area. But he's going to make a change. Paul Jewell putting on the striker. It's a bold move. Caleb okay, Fulham actually scored the last time that Wigan won a game over two months ago against Manchester City. <laughs> Place the Dutch international Danny Lanzac. I just wonder where he's going to use Kyle Fall. Might just be a question of Emil Heskey tucking in now and letting the new man just chase the ball down the channels with his fresh legs. Give them an outlet. That's what's going to happen, I think. Fallen in the most advanced position. Well, if you gave this script to Hollywood they chuck it out as being unrealistic this is amazing really Sheffield United and Wigan's future hanging by a thread here now I think Sheffield United are going to have a player yellow clouded here I think the referee no I got it wrong it was for Wigan I thought he may have decided that that was a dive by Aguero but he obviously saw it as a foul no it was clear contact there by Paul Sharner and this isn't a bad position to swing one in and test the keeper Mike Pollitt Gillespie and Kazim Richards over the ball
school and Agamon just thump one here, test the keeper if they can. Which he tried to do, came out to Morgan and the skipper lifted it far too high. He's had enough to do on the back foot, Chris Morgan, a little glimpse of goal. Rush of blood to the head. change and as he goes off Nick Montgomery the man playing despite a dislocated shoulder just gestures to the crowd to keep the support going here as he's replaced by Claude Davis the experienced Jamaican international defender of course and wins his first defensive header and again against Fulham presumably that's uh, why he's been brought on Bowling's a big lad. Away by Unsworth. Davis. Here's Kilgallen. Who will take responsibility now for Sheffield United? Who will be brave enough to uh, take his man on and try and produce that telling ball? They need a goal. Otherwise, they're down. The man can't prevent Sheffield United getting the throw. Sheffield United could have just 10 minutes left in the Premiership. What's a foul? What's a foul? There's a few rush challenges going in there at the moment, a hint of desperation. Maybe another yellow card here, is there? Not for the challenge, but Valencia kicked the ball away. A time for brave hearts for Wigan. He hasn't delivered too many telling crosses. Keith Gillespie is a chance. Morgan goes for it again. Headed down into the crowd of players. Kazim Richards tries to get in the shot. Scrambled away for a corner. Just cannot clear the lines, can they, Wigan? Keeps coming back. And emitting pressure. And we got Davis now as an additional target. He got up high. Skoko gets it away. It's yet another corner. Shorter effort this time. Enabling uh, Gillespie to get a better cross in. Pollock stretches for it against the woodwork. An incredible barrage as Kilgallen is beaten to the sliding tackle. Tom. Here's Geary. They're queuing up for the cross here. They didn't want it there though. Heskey stabs it away. Well, they're riding the luck, aren't they? He misjudges that. Hopefully, Mike Pollock. Step. Well, good challenge. But back out to Geary. Davis has remained forward. Stead is there still. And Tong is also still there. He's done well. Wigan are hanging on somehow. And Foden has got to keep this and he couldn't. Well, you look at it and you just see another penalty coming about here with some of the challenges that are going in. And if Warner, you know, wanted Tong to go down there, there was an opportunity to. Well, Pollard has mishandled that greasy ball and given them another corner. No, he hasn't. The referee has decided that's the earlier incident. The referee's given a goal kick for the later. Just misjudges it. Gets caught underneath the cross. Mike Pollard could have turned out a lot worse. So honest he was. My, Michael Tong stayed on his feet when the challenge came in. Well, look at that, 1%, and where was that 1%? I can't even remember it. Astonishing, relentless wave upon wave of attacks by Sheffield United. But it hasn't as yet brought them the goal they need to hang on to their Premiership life. West Ham still leading against Manchester United. Remember, a draw is enough for West Ham United.
So he's looking for Manchester United to conjure up two goals somehow. He's looking for his team to conjure up one. Morgan looking for Stead. And he tried the spectacular effort there, Weber. He's happy to see it go for a corner instead. No, it's simple but effective. Just get the ball in the box. Kilban gets it away this time. It's come out to Gillespie. Well, I, wouldn't like to, uh, I wouldn't like to know what the heartbeat rate is at the moment on the bench and in the stands. And that applies to both the teams here and both the sets of fans. No, for Paul Jill, that six minutes will feel like 60 minutes. It'll be the opposite for Neil Warner. Well, I tell you, we're neutrals and it's impossible not to get sucked into the drama of it all here. And Valencia goes on a solo run just to keep the ball out of his half, basically. Colonel Collins took a real knock. He just come on the pitch, but he's polaxed over there. Hardly been able to get into the game, really. Challenge with Claude Davis, a clash of heads. Well, if they don't pull it off, Sheffield United, they'll look back to the moments that could have made the story oh so different. And Danny Webber has been central to that with that little chance well, he skipped through on goal and he does keep his composure well he does exactly what he wants to apart from getting the shot on target he is on side I think such are the margins Sheffield United have got five minutes plus stoppage time to find the goal that will keep them in the Premiership. Wigan have got five minutes to hold on, not only to their lead, but to their status at the top level. Well, he's had some heroic performances, hasn't he, so far, Paul Jewell, and he'll be thinking, well, with the kind of characters I've got out there, how on earth have we ended up in this situation? Stead! Oh, oh he's tried to be too careful with it, hasn't he? He's tried to be too precise. A side foot really coming out of the sky. Just swing your leg at it, take a chance. Don't quite know what he was thinking there. Never got in a good position, got his body over it. Well, what league in the world could produce this kind of drama? That's the fantastic thing, there's such an honesty about it, isn't there? It's difficult to match. We're going to just simply pen back now, expecting the next assault. Eski gets up to help clear. Kilban completes the clearance. Remember, we're going to only got ten men out there after the sending off of Lee McCullough. As it's pumped into their box yet again. And again by Kazim Richards, but straight to pot it this time. They're just going to try and change the pattern of this match because the ball continually coming back sooner or later. Sheffield United will get a chance in the few minutes that he remaining. Just get the ball up to Caleb Fowler. Try and get somebody into support. I know you don't want to leave yourselves exposed. I know you're a man down. But when it's like this, well, will that chance come and United take it? This game and the immediate future of these two clubs hangs by a goal here. If Sheffield United get one now, there would surely not be enough time for Wigan to hit back. And it seems unlikely that even Manchester United are going to get two late on against West Ham. But in the English Premiership, the unlikely happens regularly. Keski gets it away. Tong helping it out to Gillespie again. Morgan has stayed forward now, like another centre forward, the captain, and he goes up for that. Pollock did really well that time. That 
ball is so slippery, you know. Mike Pollock was just looking at his gloves then. I understand it at Old Trafford. They're playing stoppage time. Three minutes of it. So it looks as though West Ham United, against all the odds, are going to survive. And against all the odds, it looks that way at the moment for Wigan. But we've got a couple of minutes here, plus stoppage time. The trapdoor is beginning to open for Sheffield United. Unsworth penalty deep into first half stoppage time could keep Wigan in the Premiership. Could send Sheffield United down. Heskey gets it away. Oh, We're into the last minute. Look <laughs> at those defensive headers as Enro Heskey mate. Unbelievable. Well, we know where this one's going, but this time, Kaspi goes short instead. In it goes again, Morgan grappling to try and get there. Gillespie keeps it in play, but only gives it back to Kevin Kilban, who was quite happy to be challenged and win the throw. We're just staying up there now. Chris Morgan, no point in going back. It's such a job for the referee, you know, when there's arms and legs all over the place, pushing and shoving. Is he brave enough to make a decision? He tries to pretend he's calm. Dave Whelan, the man who's poured so much of his fortune and his life into Wigan Athletic, knows now that there's only stoppage time between them and survival. Foul on Valencia. Five minutes, just as there was at the end of the first half, when it proved crucial, of course, because that's when Wigan got their goal, their second goal. How many times have you seen that? Two lots of five-minute stoppage. Not often, I can tell you. Chance enough for United. More agony for Paul Jewell. More tension and drama for those watching. That was the right ball, wasn't it? Almost like a rugby player getting into touch as deep into the opposition half as you can. But what it has done, of course, is given Sheffield United possession again. One goal could be worth £50 million. Pound. Kilgallen hitting it long. Not convincing clearance by Unsworth. Gillespie back in again. Has in Richards. Gillespie we're going to have to draw on their stamina their resources yet again as the ball is pumped into the umpteenth time Heskey with a brilliant defensive header away Boy's favourite to get there and has there's some tired legs some tired minds out there well when you're fighting for your premiership survival that's enough to give you an injection of energy Playing on memory, some of these Wigan players now in defence. John Stan. Oh, it's a great ball! What a ball across! Gillespie turns it back, and that was the chance. That was the moment when Sheffield United might have got their goal. Oh, Danny Weber just stares at the goal now, thinking, why wasn't I there? He produces a cross out of nothing. And look how close Danny Weber is to that. Not close enough. Flings his arms up. Pollock could easily have knocked the ball out to a waiting United player. They get away with it. It's full time at Old Trafford where it's finished. Manchester United nil, West Ham United one. So West Ham are safe at the moment. Sheffield United are going to fill the third and final relegation place unless... Incredible, incredible finish to what's been a remarkable Premiership season. Referee showing me another yellow card. I'm not even sure to whom at this moment. I think Foden. Yeah, it was Foden diving in. Morgan had to go off and change his jersey. He's come back with uh, no number, no captain's armband. Wigan failed to get it properly clear. Two minutes to go. Two minutes to hang on.
to their premiership place. Just don't give it away, just get it in the channels. Just knock it forward and chase it forward. That's all you need to do. Davis gets there. And Paddy Kenny has got to be absolutely sure with this ball out, which he is. Around 90 seconds remaining at Bramall Lane. As the ball rebounds safely into the hands of Pollitt. Who will hold on to it for as long as the referee will allow him. Neil Warnock has only been in the Premiership, or the equivalent once before. That was when he was in charge of Notts County 16 years ago. And they got relegated in that season. Is fate going to strike again for him? Is Paul Jewell going to have worked the miracle here on the final day with Wigan Athletic? Well, football just never ceases to amaze you, does it? Because coming into this weekend, you're right, Sheffield United looked in pole position to survive and there's a scuffle now to get the ball back Stuart McCall dived in to try and get the ball back well there's so much at stake on the next 30 seconds here you can understand the tension on the touchline you can feel it all around Bramall Lane this could be the final throw of the dice Paddy Kenny comes forward Kenny shot the referee's whistle had gone anyway, and that might be that. Mr. Dean has looked at his watch. Wigan have a free kick. And Wigan have a lifeline. David Unsworth's penalty looks like condemning Sheffield United from whence they came. For Sheffield United, so is life in the Premiership. After just one season, they go back into the Football League, and Wigan Athletic survive by the skin of their teeth. It's Watford, Charlton, and Sheffield United who are going down. Right. Devastation. It's just goosebumps, isn't it? It sends a tingle down your spine to see the two contrast of emotion it's just incredible but you've got to hand it to these Wigan players for the performance they put in against the odds for a large portion of this game and there were some heroes out there none more so than Emil Heskey who was absolutely immense in attack and in defence but he wasn't alone Paul Sharna desired before he went off incredible well we're used to seeing these scenes every year but it doesn't get any easier to look at does it rather like intruding into private grief and in a way that's exactly what it is the whole summer stretches ahead for players and fans and management and not much to look forward to now when those fixtures come out in June there'll be games against Barnsley and Colchester and Scunthorpe rather than Manchester United, Chelsea and Liverpool but the glamour of the Premiership will still be there for Paul Jewell and Wigan Athletic for Sheffield United it's back to the grind of life in the Championship which as everyone knows of course is a desperately difficult league to get out of well they've embellished the Premiership Sheffield United they've come into it and they've enjoyed it I think more than anything They've enjoyed the challenge and they always knew they were going to be up against it. But to suffer, to lose out in these circumstances, it doesn't get much harder for fans or players alike.